was I didn't choose to be a cat. I was ordered by Big Brother <laughs> to act out that role with uh, with Rula. Uh, and I and I did it. And During your chat with Davina, you said, luckily I'm not standing in any other elections. That was my last one and I lost it. Yeah. Does this mean we won't be seeing you run for any other elections in the future? I said that I was one of the few MPs to announce before being elected that if elected, I would not seek re-election. I made that uh, clear to the electorate before I stood and I certainly haven't changed my mind. Do you think you serve the best interests of your constituents by prancing about in a leotard? I did, Big Brother, so that people in Palestine who don't have shoes for their children and who don't have food to eat might get some money out of it. That goal I have achieved. And if I achieve nothing else, that was a worthwhile goal. Hello. George. George. Thank you, George. Thanks, guys. I suppose it's no smoking, is it? Did you ever see a collection of smokers like that? Hey, what's no. up? <laughs> Respect, man. Respect. You guys been for a while, huh? Yeah. Yeah, man. Apparently there's no smoking. No smoking, yeah. uh, Thank you everyone for coming along mm -hmm. today. Um, just to remind you that we'd like to keep questions to time in the house only for both George and Dennis. And also as we work our way around the room, if you could let us know who you are and which publication or media you work for, we'd be much appreciated. Right, well, so we'll start questions. Sorry. Hello, George. Hi. Sarah Nathan from The Sun. Ah. Hello. Muzzle tough about your time in the house. Um, I just want to know, did you, do you think you'll ever live down your um, episode as a cat? Well, I'm, I'm amazed that the cat uh, seems to have uh, captured the imagination. So it was Red Nose Day. On Red Nose Day, uh, well-known people um, act out uh, roles for charity. That's all I was doing. And as I said to Davina after the show, I was so bored in there that whenever a task came along, I threw myself into it with uh, enthusiasm. Too much enthusiasm as a cat, it would appear, for some tastes. Uh, but that's all it was. It was a game. It was a task given to me by Big Brother. It was compulsory. I think that's an important point. It was, I didn't choose to be a cat. I was ordered by Big Brother <laughs> to act out that role with uh, with Rula uh, and I and I did it and I did it with uh, to the best of my ability as I did with the, all the tasks have you got any other favorite animal impressions and <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm going to give you tonight Mr Galloway Ben Ando from BBC News can I ask you do you think that dressing up as a cat was more important than voting in Parliament actually I didn't dress up as a cat as you'll uh, recall if you saw it I was wearing a white lab coat uh, I was the lab assistant uh, in charge of the scientific uh, experiments. Uh, but I'll cut to the chase on that one. We represent a different kind of politics. We don't believe that talking to parliamentarians, the current crop of parliamentarians, is very important. That's why I spend most of my time on the road in Britain, going to and coming back from public meetings. Our task we see is to take politics to the people. And that's what I do for a living, and that's what I'll continue to do. And I made a choice. I could travel to 500 painters union halls and speak to a really good audience of 500, or I could take a chance of speaking to millions of people every day uh, through the Big Brother show. Now, whether that was a good choice will be determined in the next few months uh, by the response of the people that we are trying to talk to. And so it's too early to say that. Okay, that's but if you're so interested in Parliament, why stand as an MP, Mr Galloway? Well, we have a different attitude to Parliament to the other parties. Our attitude is that Parliament is a platform that should be used uh, when it's the best use of the time available. I'd rather speak in Middlesbrough to a few hundred people than hang around the bars of the House of Commons like other MPs uh, do 
most of their uh, most of their time. I don't do that. That's not the approach we have to politics. Now, you might not like that, and I infer from your tone that you don't. Fair enough. I'll just have to write you off as a lost cause and, and stagger on without you. George, why did you decide to go on a programme that's enjoyed by so many young people? Well, we have uh, disproportionate support from young people. Uh, I don't say that all young people support us, but we, we have a disproportionate number of members who are young and supporters who are young, and I thought that this would be a way of reaching them. Uh, young people between the ages of 18 and 24 overwhelmingly don't vote in political elections, but they overwhelmingly vote in Big Brother elections and other shows like it. So that was part of the audience that we were trying to reach. You know, MPs, although you wouldn't know it from the press coverage that I've just scanned, are constantly off in foreign climbs on fact-finding missions. Look at the records of the Interparliamentary Union, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, and the interest groups of everywhere. You know, the most popular interest groups in Parliament are the Seychelles and, uh, and places like that. And MPs are constantly on planes, away from Parliament, away from their constituents, fact-finding in exotic places. Well, I found some facts in the last three weeks. I found a fact that there are people in their 20s who don't know what a gynaecologist is, who don't know what an MP is, who think Dundee is next to Cardiff, who don't know if Iraq is in Europe. Now, that means that there's a lot of people out there need to be hooked and engaged on politics. And that's the mission that we have. Whether it succeeded remains to be seen. Well, I can help on that because um, we have people who vote on our show as well, and our broadcast audience is 18 to 25. And uh, we ask them a simple vote, do you like or hate George Galloway? And in 20 minutes, 21,000 people text in, and these are the results. Thank you. I'll uh, study them later. 93% <coughs> said that they hate you. So maybe... Hate me, that's a hate bit strong. You. That is quite strong, isn't it? That's quite shocking. What, what station are you? Radio 1. Oh. So perhaps because you were patronising to, you know, the people in their 20s, and because you didn't connect with them as much, mm. do you think maybe it was a mistake looking back? Well, I've just uh, reviewed <coughs> things over quite a long period that people in their 20s inside the house said about me, and they were gloriously complimentary. So... You've got to understand that in the Big Brother house, in the pressure cooker that exists there, which is, believe me, if you've never been in it, you cannot imagine it. You've got to try and understand it. Feelings get inflamed, accentuated, and are extremes. Somebody loves you one minute and really respects you one minute and hates you the next minute and then loves you again. So I'm not surprised that in that pressure cooker, things went up and down in relations with these young people. And as for your poll, which I'll treat with a pinch of salt. Please don't. Uh, no, I will. For listeners. No, I, I will treat it with a pinch of salt because the only poll that really matters is whether the number of young people joining Respect goes up or down. Do you think you've helped that cause? Well, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Why don't you come back and interview me in three months' time, and, and we'll see. I have one tip. People in their 20s mm. aren't kids. Don't call them kids. No, some of them behave like kids. That's not your no, place some of to them, say. It's okay, my guys, place we'll to say. It is my place to say. George, we'll move on. Hi, Alexa from the Evening Standard. Just a two-part question. First of all is, um, you say that people in the house were overwhelmingly complimentary about you, but... No, I didn't say that. Well, you said that it was a, a, a swing during, between love and hate during, and love yeah, again. But it seemed period. to be that the relationship with the younger people just de degenerated towards the end. And, yeah. um, there was one quote by Maggot, which I don't know if you heard because it was in the diary room, but he said that you claim to represent victims of cruelty, but you turned out to be one of the cruelest members of the house. This was after what you said to Michael Barrymore. Mm. Um, and I think Preston described you as about as democratic as a big Nazi. So I just wondered what your response is to that. Well, I'm not going to get down and dirty with people who are still inmates in a house and who might well say something different when we meet on Sunday at the rap party. I hope so, or it's not going to be much of a party. Uh, so don't ask, me to, don't ask me to comment on individual things which 
you say people have said that I didn't hear. All I'm saying to you is that there was a period in there when the same people you're now quoting uh, were praising me to the skies. So it waxed and it waned. But my audience was not the 11 people in the house. My audience, frankly, was not the Evening Standard or Radio 1 or the Daily whatever. My audience was the people whatever. <laughs> the, uh, my, my, audience, my audience was the people, and that's the only test. You can come with me, if you like, on a very busy February where I'm speaking just about everywhere in England and Wales, and come and see the audiences. If the audiences are small and hostile, then you'll be right. If they're not small and not hostile, maybe I'll have been proved right. Are you going to go down to Brick Lane tonight? Is that what you said you're planning to well, do? Well, I hope to, but apparently Channel 4 have other plans, so it'll be tomorrow I'll be okay, in Brick Lane. All right, we'll take the question down George, during your chat with Davina, you said, luckily I'm not standing in any other elections. That was my last one and I lost it. Yeah. Now, I know you've said before that you'd only serve one term as respect MP at Bethnal Green, but does yeah. this mean we won't be seeing you run for any other elections in the future? I said that I was one of the few MPs to announce before being elected that if elected, I would not seek re-election. I made that uh, clear to the electorate before I stood and I certainly haven't changed my mind. Okay, Jackie. Hi, George. Um, you were talking about the tasks that you had to perform and that you sort of gave everything your all, whether you were being an, a rocker or a cat, whatever you had to do, you went, really went for it. And, and that was I would have preferred to be a mod. I don't know why they uh, <laughs> visited that but hairstyle that, on that, me. That took, that took quite a bit of guts because you were in a house full of people who were paid to do that professionally. You also, when it came to um, Jimmy Savile coming into the house, <laughs> asked if you could go to the Oscars. If the right substantial, attractive offer came along, would you ever ditch the career in politics for a serious career in show business? Well, they say that politics is show business for ugly people. But what would I know about that? OK, can you do some questions oh. for Dennis? Come on, give me, a, give me a straight answer to that question. Uh, no, you see, I don't think that you can make a sharp delineation between these two things. Because increasingly, uh, these lines are crossed and will have to be crossed. If Mohammed won't come to the... Uh, if the mountain won't come to Mohammed, Mohammed will have to go to the mountain. Now, the truth is, there's mass alienation and abstention of whole sections of the community from politics. Fewer people vote in elections than did before the First World War. And yet, more people demonstrate against war and so on than ever have demonstrated in Britain before. So we have to tackle that alienation. We have to try and reach people directly. Uh, through whatever medium we can. And if appearing on Red Nose Day or acting as a cat on Big Brother is the price that you have to pay, well, it's not the worst thing in the world. But would you abandon your polit political career altogether if no, you got a big enough... No, I've already concern? said that I won't be standing uh, for election to Parliament again. Uh, and I will do other television work uh, because television reaches millions of people and it's my job in life to reach people. And I can do it by driving thousands of miles to reach hundreds in halls. And I will do that, continue to do that. But if uh, an offer came along to do a television program, and some have, to reach millions of people, then I will do that too. OK. Uh, Leonie Gold from Chilton FM. Dennis, question for you. Would you consider coming to England to play basketball, specifically for um, our team, MK Lions? <laughs> <laughs> If the money's right. Are they good? <laughs> they would be better if you paid. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I'll be here till Sunday, so. Maybe. Can you so. give me a slightly longer answer? <laughs> like I said, you know, I don't, I don't need the money. You know, so, uh, you know, if it's worthwhile to go in there and have a good time and playing, I'll go play. You know, entertain the people, and uh, <clears throat> it seems like a lot of people can't stand my guts here, which I really don't give a <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I don't care, you know, I live my life for me, and um, <clears throat> if they want me to play, if it's good enough, I go play. There's a lot of people in Milton Keynes that would love you to come play there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael. George, uh, Michael Barrymore on the swimming pool, you, were you aware he avoided the swimming pool at all, at all times, apart from the fire alarm? <laughs> Was this something that was in your head? 
Let me say about uh, Michael Barrymore. Well, let, let, let me preface it with a with a with a positive. Uh, the the only two friends I made in there were Dennis and Pete, and I think they were the two coolest cats in the house. And I'm proud that they are my friends. And if I had to uh, make two friends, that's the two I would have chosen, and that's how it worked out. I had a view about Michael Barrymore when I came in, and I expressed it. I hope it was shown. It was that he's been treated monstrously by the gutter press who have ferociously and entirely unjustly attempted to crucify him, drive him out of his country, drive him out of work. And I hoped that this show would provide some redemption, some resurrection of that career, because he's a brilliantly funny man and he deserves to be back in his own country on the stage. I thought that at the beginning, and I still think it now. But he avoided the pool. Eh? Yeah, well, I'm, 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 I'm going to come tangentially to that point. Now, what I discovered is that, as a person, Michael Barrymore is not as nice as he looks. He is a great performer, a great entertainer, a great artist, bordering on uh, comic genius at times. But as a person, I discovered he was not everything I would have hoped. Now, I know that we are all aware of the terrible tragedy that happened in that uh, swimming pool at his home, which led to the media frenzy against him. He's never been charged with anything by the police. He's never been convicted of anything by the courts. Well, he's never been charged with anything relating to the swimming pool. He's never been convicted of anything concerned with the swimming pool. He was unjustly driven out of the country, in my view, and that continues to be my view. And I thought it bizarre that some of the very newspapers that witch hunted him the most attacked me because I fell out with him. And suddenly he was poor Michael Barrymore, which just goes to show that there are some people that these newspapers hate even more than Michael Barrymore. So I don't know if he was avoiding the pool. If he was, I dare say it was because the gutter press were just waiting for an opportunity okay. to, uh, to monster him about it. But I have no doubt that Barrymore is an innocent man concerning that incident in the swimming pool, and none of you, given the lack of any police charges or any conviction, are in a position to say otherwise. Thank you. Sam. Um, question for George. You said in your... Sorry, can I just remind you what you said? What obligation? Oh, sorry, from the Press Association. Um, you said in your interview with Davina that one of the things you realised in the House you couldn't live without was news. Yeah. Um, you're probably aware there's been a couple of quite big developments in your life today outside the House. Some good news, some bad news. Just wonder um, how you reacted to those. Well, I was delighted uh, to learn that the Daily Telegraph had lost the latest of their line of appeals. Uh, I thought momentarily that they'd have to pay me the very large amount in damages that they were ordered by the court to do, but apparently that must now await the result of their attempt to appeal to the House of Lords. But hey, it's money in the bank. Um, I was very happy uh, about that. I presume the other thing you refer to is the um, Washington thing, yeah? You know, I've said all I've got to say on that in the past. There have been, uh, there have, there, there have been all sorts of allegations uh, made in relation to the Oil for Food program. All of them are false. And uh, if anybody wants to talk to me uh, about them, I'll, of course, be delighted to do so. The bottom line is that nobody ever gave me any money for my work on Iraq, except the newspapers which falsely alleged that someone else had done so. And now those newspapers have had to pay out millions of pounds in damages and costs in a whole series of libel actions. And I think that uh, really speaks for itself. Okay, Lena. George, Lena from IRN. When did Big Brother stop being a game for you? You seemed to take it very personally when you had your rights taken away and you weren't allowed to nominate. Yeah. I think one, you even said to uh, President Chantel 
um, you will get retribution even if it's out of the house. Mm. That sounds like you took it very seriously. No, I don't think I said retribution. So please don't put words in my my I'm mouth. Paraphrasing. But I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you this. Things get out of proportion when you're locked up for three weeks in the Big Brother house. And things which seem terribly important inside the house, even a day or two later, because of course it is now a day or two since that, and uh, actually relations markedly improved uh, between me and Preston and Chantel in the, in, the, in the last 48 hours even. But now that I'm out, I can see that there was a certain uh, loss of proportion there. Um, George, in the house, you came over as a, a bitter, patronising, twisted old man. But with that in mind, <laughs> what was your favourite moment in the house? <laughs> what did you enjoy the most while you were in there? George, can I punch you? Yeah. I'm saying how you came across. Now, that wasn't a personal statement. That's how you came across. Okay, Alex, we'll move on. Michael, question Sorry we didn't find any of the girls attractive. What difference would it have made if you managed to get Madonna in there? Would that would have helped you? Well, I, you know, I think it's, it's this interview, right? You guys talking to him, right? No, well, no so that's, that's, you, that's it's really interesting, that question. Well, I mean, I mean, all the questions going to be talking about sex and sex, 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 whatever, you know. Uh, I think that the main important thing is about this, this whole uh, venture you guys are doing right now is the fact that you guys want to know about the house, you know. <clears throat> I'm known to speak in my mind in, in the U.S. and around the world. If I spoke my mind, you guys wouldn't like it. So I'm going to keep my mouth shut and do the best thing I can do is keep my mouth shut. And uh, I think he's doing a very good job of trying to straighten things out in, in, a, in a good, monitoring way. And uh, like I said, that house and the people in the house are more, it's, it's a lot more cruelty because you think these kids, Chantel and all the people in the house, are that innocent. And it's very, it's very, it's very difficult for people here in Britain and in London to understand that because you guys are kind of narrow-minded. So like this guy right here, he's saying that he's an old man. He's not an old man. He's a very intelligent man. That's how he came across. But it? I know I'm just saying though, if you're talking to me, we'll go at it. We'll go at it because you know you what? Well, I know something. Saying, we'll go at it. Me and you'll go at it. You know because <laughs> it, it doesn't matter though. He's not an old man. He's not an old man. This is how he came across. But but do this though. If, if you're gonna talk to him, respect him. Simple as that. Oh, because he, he wants him to respect you, right? He respects people in my audience. No, 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 I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, though, if you're going to call somebody an old man, call your father an old man. Okay? He's not an old man. He's a very respected person in, in this country, and you should respect him as a person. It's you know, a two way street. It, it, it's, I know it's a two way street. I know you're trying to do your job. Let him do his job. Don't call him an old man. Because if you call me an old man, I'll be over in your ass. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's, right. We're just going to take a few more questions okay. now. Can you just turn. finish that off about the fact that there was nobody gorgeous and pretty that got you excited? Because we were hoping. I mean, it, it, like I said, I wasn't in there trying to. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Oh man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't in there trying to screw anybody. I mean, the, the, the thing I was in there doing is the fact that um, you had 11 people in there, all walks of life, and um, for me to go in there try to have sex with somebody, I could have did that very easy. That was my job. I got, I'm married, I got five kids, and uh, the things I was saying in there is just the fact that I was just, uh, I'm stuck, trapped in this house, uh, whatever you want to call a house, and, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it don't matter Madonna, Karma Electra, uh, Sharon Stone, uh, you name it, Cindy Crawford, people I've kind of associated with, it didn't matter. You know, I, I was in there to have sex. I was in there to have a good time and try to figure out things that uh, I, can, I can cope with, but, uh, you know, like I say, you know, this is not about lashing anybody in that house. Everyone is trying to win and do their job and try to you know, be somebody. But uh, I said, you guys got it backwards here. You guys got, okay, great, Chantel. She's a sweet, innocent girl. Oh, Chantel, you just don't know. She's not innocent? I said, you just don't know. Just put it like that. You just don't know. And when we come back here all together, I have no problem lashing everybody in that room. And you'll get a taste of that, all right? So, okay. whatever. Peace. Thank you. Hi, this is for Dennis and George. Um, apart from your antics in the house, we've all been glued by Chantel and Preston. Is their romance for real, or is it all a game plan? You want that one? <sighs> well, I mean, uh, who, who can tell? Um, I, 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 obviously, Preston is the stronger character of the two. Uh, I think there was a moment that Chantel had 
genuine affection and hopes for something uh, with Preston. My own view about Preston will will wait till he's here. Uh, like Dennis, I don't want to say when people are still incarcerated in there uh, what I uh, really feel about them. The reason that I had the the uh, argument around the dinner table the other night was precisely because the people were still there and I could say it to their face and I don't think it's a secret what my views of certain people in the house are but I don't think it would be fair for me to heap uh, um, opprobrium on them now when they're unable to answer it because they're still in there. Jackie. Uh, question for Dennis. Um, George explained his motivation for going into the house was to reach people. You yourself, I think, inside the house said that you felt that most people's motivation was the money. Of course. You just certainly don't need the money. No. You're a very famous guy already. What were you doing there? Uh, I figured I'd go in and do something different. That was different. Um, but why? <laughs> <laughs> that was different. <laughs> that was different. I just thought that uh, I don't do reality shows and my agent said, you know, just do it, just do it because you have nothing to do with for a month. So we'll do it. So I went and done it, and it's. Uh, I don't know what you want me to tell you. It's it's it's, it's different. It's it's really different, and uh, it's very difficult to to try to keep a standard as far as like communication. But when you have people that are here, and you're here, it's very difficult to go down. It's very hard, very difficult, and very hard to come up and stay there. And and I was trying to tell a lot of people in the house. Korea and uh, Rula, and me and George talked about it and said, you know what, I've always told these people, you know what, don't lose the reason why you're in this house. Do not lose that reason why you're in this house. Not to try to communicate with kids, you know, it's communicate with everybody, everybody. Keep in perspective that you're in this house for one reason, to play the game. That's it, play the game. What's your overall impression of, of Britain, British people, British I, culture? I love it because you guys are just straight out. You guys are just, just like this guy, just straight out to the point. I hate your guts, this, this, this. You go right at us, boy. I love it. I love it. That's where I am. And uh, like I said, I don't have any personal views against this guy. I don't care. You know, I don't have a, any personal views. I know. I'm just saying, we're just, we're just talking. It's just talking. So I just love how you guys just come at us. And, you know, I've said you guys are kind of like, you know, just like people in New York, kind of like assholes. <laughs> no, 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 it's not in the bad way. We're just saying, people in New York, people in New York, we got people in New York just like that. Same people in New York are assholes too, you know, whatever. But I'm just saying, but in a good way, in a good way. You guys have, you guys have been very, very good to me and uh, good to the people that come here. And uh, like I said, I love your city. I do love your city. Okay, literally, last couple of questions. Go on the back row. Yeah, Alistair Clay from Teletext. Just a question for George and Dennis. Both of you and Pete from the reactions from our viewers came across as, as the least liked uh, members of the house. Now, whether you you know you take on board what, what, how you experience the house, do you feel that Big Brother has misrepresented you, that this is the image that viewers have been given? <coughs> well, I've not seen any of the footage, so I, c I couldn't possibly say that. Um, but, uh, and uh, obviously I'm deeply dismayed that the readers of Teletext uh, <laughs> don't uh, like me. I, I'll just have to stagger on without their support too. <laughs> okay, Rachel. Rachel, this is the News of the World. Um, in Chantel, do you think Celebrity Big Brother has created a monster? Of course, if you could answer that, it'd be great, thanks. Well, I, I just think that, she, that, what they call it, candy floss? Is it candy floss? Okay. That it doesn't is, exist. That is crap. <laughs> <laughs> she can't sing. I mean, she, she can't sing. I mean, it's just... I don't know, you British people have a tendency to make famous people, they're nothing. They're, I mean, she's she, she gonna come out there all of a sudden, she's a star, why, how? How do you do that? How, how do you do that? She's a star been in this, 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 this house. How is that? She hasn't done anything, <laughs> nothing. And you guys sit there and say, oh my gosh, Chantel, we love you for what? <laughs> what has she done? George? <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't add anything to that. Okay. But do you, do you must have an opinion about the fact that a reality TV show has effectively made a celebrity in three weeks? Well, I mean, that's show business, isn't it? Right. Show business. Final question, Sarah. This is for George. Um, it's a two-pronged question. One, do you think you serve the best interests of your constituents by prancing about in a leotard? And secondly, do you actually think you've gained respect from being in the house? Well, uh, as I said about leotards and cats, 
um, on Red Nose Day, all sorts of well-known people dress up in very strange outfits and do very strange things, and they do it for charity. And I did Big Brother for three things, and then I'd like to add a point, if I may, on money. I did Big Brother for three reasons. Number one, so that people in Palestine who don't have shoes for their children and who don't have food to eat might get some money out of it, might get something to put on their children's feet, might get something to put in their children's stomach. That goal I have achieved. And if I achieved nothing else, that was a worthwhile goal. Number two, I did it so that I could employ other people to work in my constituency from my own earnings from participating in the show. And thirdly, to reach an audience that political figures don't normally reach. Now, I've lost teletext and I've lost this gentleman's show on Radio 1. I'll just have to live with that and but hope... Let me finish, that? please. And let me... Uh, uh, and hope that I can recover it elsewhere. Maybe I'll even recover some of their viewers and, and listeners uh, too. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. Come with me. Throughout February, I'm appearing somewhere near you. So come with me and let's see what the public's reaction is. Now, my, the last point I wanted to make, because I, I noticed from the cuttings that someone has made an issue of this. I never had any intention of taking my parliamentary salary for the time that I was in the Big Brother house. And I shall inform the fees office in the House of Commons of that in the morning. I could not inform them before I came in here because I was contractually forbidden to tell anyone that I was doing this show. So please don't think that the country paid me a wage <laughs> while I was in the Big Brother house, because they didn't.